Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Seraldo with Miami Design Preservation League. We're very excited to have the last of our spring 2018 lectures tonight. The theme for the uh, spring series has been Made in Miami. And um, I don't know about you all, but I'm very excited about this lecture in particular, the climax of our lectures, which is all about the doors of Miami Beach, the Art Deco doors. And we have with us Bill Witzer, who over the last 26 years has been an author and photographer, and he has documented literally hundreds of amazing doors. And his stunning photos reveal the microcosm of the story of South Florida's architectural evolution from Mediterranean to Tropical Deco to Miami Modern. So we're very excited to have him here. And for those of you who have missed the prior lectures, uh, definitely follow our YouTube channel because we put up the lectures within, usually it takes about a month to get the lectures up, but they're very high quality lectures on uh, Miami Design Preservation League channel. And if you're not a member, please make sure that you sign up on mdpl.org to help support all of these great programs. And do we have any tour guides in the audience tonight? Thank you to our amazing tour guides who give daily walking tours of the Art Deco District and uh, also members go free on those tours as well. So without further ado, let's welcome Bill Witzer. Thank you very much for turning out. I, Miami Beach is an architectural wonder world and many of the city's doors are actually signposts to understanding the kingdom of tropical deco as it was created here in the 1930s and 40s. Uh, take this vintage door, for example. It features a flamingo, a pelican, a parrot, a fleur de lis like blossom, a star, undulating ocean waves, and all sorts of tropical vegetation. Mediterranean revival themes also abound the uh, decorative Spanish tiles, the faux lantern over the door, the red tile roof. I call all these uh, the design elements, these lush tropical and Mediterranean motifs, Floridiana. And Miami Beach is the world uh, capital of Floridiana. Now this door is on a home just about a mile from here, adjacent to the city's Flamingo Park, with its swimming pool and tennis courts. This house was erected 81 years ago, back in 1937. And when I first photographed it back in the early 1990s, it looked a bit rusty and worse for wear, as you can see here. Uh, but uh, soon the owners made uh, uh, great repairs and gave the house a brand new uh, paint job. Uh, later they uh, put these uh, very high saturation uh, colors on the door and it seems to have attracted a real bird down here. <laughs> uh, fast forward 15 years, here's the same building and the color palette has been muted, very pastel. Uh, finally, uh, here's the door uh, just a few months ago in February. Without that one-of-a-kind door. But with that one-of-a-kind door, uh, this 2,500 square foot, four-bedroom, single-family home is worth more than $1.6 million today, according to the real estate site Zillow. Well, when it was all new, back in the sun-filled, subtropical Miami Beach of the 1930s and 40s, few people had air conditioning. But thousands had electric fans and tropical deco screen doors. Whirling fans would uh, pull cooling breezes in through what are probably the most elegant uh, and uh, the most elegant and amazing screen doors ever dreamed up. Astonishing little Art Deco masterpieces. Uh, here, this looks like Marrakesh on Meridian Avenue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a, a single family home, very elegant single family home in the northern part of uh, Miami Beach. Another one uh, nearby, pine tree. Uh, this is a very unusual one because you've got not only the, uh, you know, Spanish tiles uh, surrounding the door, uh, but you've got uh, federal architecture, this pediment, classical columns, uh, and there are actually more than one uh, uh, door like this with a sort of federal theme, so it's very eclectic. I like this. Uh, on a held up of the door. This is in Morningside, a Miami uh, residential neighborhood on the mainland. Uh, this seems to be a vestigial awning here. Uh, this is in South Beach, or well, no, Mid Beach, let's say. Okay, this one, uh, uh, it's uh, so Morocco in Miami. 
Uh, it's a door and morning sign, and it just has this uh, thousand and one Arabian Nights vibe to it. I fully expect to see Douglas Fairbanks Sr. zoom in on a magic carpet as he did in the 1924 asylum classic, <laughs> The Thief of Baghdad, uh, with sets by William Cameron Menzies. Uh, okay, here's the 11th Street Diner on Washington Avenue, uh, very streamlined, and you see this terrific oval door. Some of the greatest Art Deco door treatments don't actually include screen doors, but nonetheless are spectacular like these. And all these architectural wonders that uh, have uh, survived uh, convey a charming aura of a more leisurely, urbane, uh, and neighborly time in South Florida, when many homes boasted an elegant entranceway that made you feel when you set foot on their threshold that you had really arrived. There was a sense of place. There was a there there. And the recurring motifs of the flamingos, sunbeams, ocean waves, palm trees, tropical flowers, and all the rest are pure Floridiana. Let's take a closer look. You've got the two pink flamingos. You've got this, I think it's a sun up here. You've got, I think, undulating waves here. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, here's the same door a couple years later. They painted the sun blue, so maybe it's a blue moon and not a sun. I'm not sure. Closer in yet, you can see the nice detailing here with these uh, wonderful Spanish tiles. Uh, you know, the building materials uh, used to create this atmosphere were not necessarily expensive. It was mostly good design that did the trick. Now, the owners of this house were uh, kind enough to let me inside, and they wanted to show me this uh, back door. Oh. It it's actually faces the inside, and it opens up into a sort of side or backyard. Now, among the most joyous of Floridian motifs are sunbeams, and here you see their diagonals co-mingling with the uh, uh, lines of the uh, cattails. You know, these are a uh, plant that grow in the wetlands, and here you have the undulating ocean waves again, and so on. This is near Flamingo Park as well. Here's the same door with a uh, different paint job a few years later. The door is still there. Uh, many of these uh, historic doors are elaborate confections featuring custom one-of-a-kind metal sculptures of high-stepping flamingos and other exotic birds, along with the stylized sunbeams and flurry of palm fronds. Uh, here's another one uh, with radiating sun. In fact, there seem to be two suns here, so it's sort of like a stop-motion deal, like, like it's a setting sun or a rising sun, I don't know, but there's the requisite flamingo, the uh, uh, cattails, the palm fronds. I mean, it's a classic uh, Floridiana door. It's in South Beach. Here's yet another one, and they've introduced uh, some fluffy clouds uh, here, but then once again, you've got the uh, sunbeams and uh, some uh, vegetation down here. Uh, here, this is uh, radiating sunbeams on this great metal door. It's a place called the Marina del Rey Apartments on the uh, Miami Beach's Normandy Isles. Uh, and this next one is a uh, screened in Florida room with like wooden uh, sunbeams coming up here. This is in the, uh, on the mainland on Miami, in my, the city of Miami, a neighborhood called Buena Vista West. Uh, I actually live, this is actually not my house, but I live nearby. Okay, um, another ubiquitous but mysterious and little commented upon deco motif are fiddlehead ferns, <laughs> which grow in the forests of five continents. Here are giant fiddlehead ferns uh, in Hawaii, photographed by a Flickr contributor called, who goes by the name Brew Books, and I published this uh, uh, under his generous uh, Creative Commons license. Uh, the fiddlehead ferns are usually green, but as you can see here in Hawaii, they sometimes turn a bright sort of technicolor orange. And uh, here are fiddlehead ferns on Lincoln Road. That's the Lincoln Theater, Thawrily. This is the Webster Hotel. Uh, here are these fiddlehead ferns again. There more fiddlehead ferns here. Fiddlehead ferns. Uh, these uh, circular uh, things here are, are, are actually supposed to be lotuses and are familiar to me from seeing Hindu architecture in, uh, in India. But this is the Lincoln Theater again. Lincoln Theater, just rampant uh, ferns. Uh, so what are they doing here, actually? Where, what, what is this fern stuff all about? Well, the lifestyle of uh, ferns uh, is, is fantastic. 
In the late winter, their spiral heads burst forth from the earth, and botanist Gregory Moore describes their growth this way. Quote, the fronds of many ferns begin as small curled balls. As they grow, they change shape and start to look like the neck of a violin. That's why they're called fiddleheads, unquote. Eventually, the uh, fiddleheads unfurl, uncoil, and widen, and the fern's leaves open from the plants as if they were sails on a, of a ship unfurling from a mast. And you can see the process here. This, uh, this illustration is by Marcella Chang of a wonderful website called theconversation.com. Now, most fiddleheads are relatively small and low to the ground, though some in Hawaii, as I mentioned before, they can go 50 feet or more. In the secret language of symbols, figurehead ferns appearing at the end of winter herald and signify the coming of spring and the fertility of the earth, and in stylized form, they inhabit many decorative designs. Once you uh, know about them, you will start seeing them everywhere, seeing highly stylized and abstracted fiddleheads on decorative designs uh, all over the world. Uh, in New York City, the Channing Building, for example. Uh, and there are many examples in Miami Beach. Here you can see the little fiddlehead ferns uh, growing up on this really elegant doorway. Uh, here, here, of course, uh, this is in mid-beach. Here's a, the, the uh, required uh, flamingo, high-stepping, and uh, fiddlehead ferns all around it. This is a little more abstract, but there they are again. Uh, well, the, the, you really start seeing them all over the place. Uh, this is one of my favorite. Uh, this is very uh, beautiful, simple. So it's actually a building near the uh, Miami Beach Police Station, and the uh, door uh, still exists, but without the sculptural element. Somebody took the sculptural element off. This picture was shot on film probably around 1992, and it's just a shame that it's gone. Now, Flor Floridiana-style tropical motifs of natural things like birds, sunbeams, and ferns are very typical. But many great doors from the 1930s and 40s, and even some Miami modern doors from the 50s and 60s feature more abstract, perfectly uh, proportioned geometric patterns like this. Uh, now, this, this door, I suspect, is a, is a new door that was added in the last uh, decade or so. But it fits the, uh, it's geometric and it fits this uh, building in the neighborhood, South Beach, uh, perfectly. Uh, speaking of circles, uh, here are, you know, uh, uh, 1525 Meridian, a uh, uh, small apartment building designed by L. Murray Dixon in 1939. Here's a wider view. You can see it's uh, flanked, the, the doors are seldom flanked by these panels of black vitrolite glass, uh, which was sort of a poor man's marble. Uh, just up the street, uh, here's, uh, let's see, 1604 Meridian. You find this ingenious entrance with uh, constructed of triangular and rectangular shapes of wood and glass bricks surrounded by panels of uh, pink dyed limestone. This is uh, also known as Florida Keystone or Oolitic Limestone, and it's yet another sort of poor man's marble here in Florida. Uh, let's see. This one really gets me. I think it's so beautiful and so simple, just a bunch of lines and uh, circles. And uh, this is a, an old picture. It was in my book, my 1995 book, so it was, predates uh, that. It's probably shot around 90, 1993. And uh, I would love to show you what it looks like now, but unfortunately, the renovators put a big fence around the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't you know, stand in the same spot with the same lens to do that. But I gotta tell you, it looked better before the renovation. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another, you know, beautifully simple little door on a small, uh, kind of unimportant building, uh, apartment building. Uh, but uh, again, it's disappeared. I captured this image sometime in the early 90s, but sometime since then it went m missing. So I keep this one in my sort of gone but not forgotten file, and I hope that my photos will help keep these lost vintage doors alive in some way or other. Uh, indeed, I hope this entire door project of the mine will inspire greater efforts to preserve and protect uh, more architectural details in all of South Florida's historic neighborhoods. Now, as many of you uh, may know, I'm a photojournalist and advertising photographer specializing in food photography. Yes, food photography, not architecture. Uh, and this is one of my, uh, one of my food images. Uh, 26 years ago, I moved to South Beach and immediately began work on, uh, on, on a coffee table book I was writing called South Beach, America's Riviera, Miami Beach, Florida. Here, of course, is the, uh, the cover, 
as the Marlin Hotel, again by L. Murray Dixon in 1939, photographed by me in the early 90s when it was owned by music and movie tycoon uh, Chris Blackwell. Uh, by the way, that's a 56 Cadillac convertible in front. <laughs> now, even after this book was published in 1995, I continued photographing local architecture in my spare time as a sort of self-assignment, focusing especially on Art Deco architectural details such as bar reliefs. This is a Hohauser building at 444 Ocean Drive, which is great. I like this one here. This is a kind of distressed building in the museum district, and I don't know if you can see, but here are some fiddleheads again, all over the place, fiddleheads. And uh, this is uh, 444 uh, Ocean Drive again, Hohauser. And also another genre or element of architecture that I got interested in were these uh, metal uh, railings, stair railings in, in the neighborhood. And of course, doors. I focused a lot on doors. Here's one of my all-time favorites. This apartment building is at 15th Street and West Avenue. It was designed by Henry Hohauser in 1937. And the door itself is full speed ahead for Indiana. Uh, featuring coconut palm, a tropical bird, uh, cattails, uh, uh, of course, in these uh, sort of World War II uh, senior citizens who were still around uh, back in the early 90s. Uh, some 15 years later, I photographed the same door from the same spot with the same lens, and you can see it's changed quite a bit. Uh, they lost, they got rid of the uh, wooden door that was sort of wearing out. They saved the you know main sculptural part of the door. Here's the bird but they welded it to this, uh, you know, kind of prison-like metal grade and painted the whole thing Darth Vader black. Uh, so I don't particularly find this very tropical. Uh, but, but still, it's better than nothing. And okay, uh, the door was still retained. Here's uh, the way it looks now. Uh, and uh, again, I couldn't step into the exact same spot with the same lens, they put heavy hedges around it, but you can see, and, and, and it's, it's not terrible, you know, if it, if it were on a new building, it might be inoffensive. Uh, but on here on a historic landmark Tropical Deco building like this, it seems to me out of place, just plain wrong. I do like the green paint job, though. It's a really nice building. Uh, so what happened uh, to the original door? Did somebody actually throw it away? Or does someone have it somewhere, a collector, a museum? Who knows? We, we just don't know. But the biggest question, or the bigger question, is how can such seemingly inappropriate alterations be allowed in what is supposedly a legally protected historic district? Well, I put that question to William Carey, then the city's chief uh, preservation officer. Uh, now, William is a good guy, and he said his department simply lacked the manpower to stop the loss of relatively uh, small architectural details, even if those details uh, contribute mightily to the neighborhood's authenticity and charm. Uh, and I must say, in William's defense, he was sort of a one-man department. I mean, he didn't have a staff. Now, uh, even though there are quite a few uh, gone but not forgotten losses like that uh, throughout Miami and Miami Beach and nearby neighborhoods, uh, there have also been some nice additions. For example, here's that terrific oval door just a couple blocks from here at the 11th Street Diner on Washington Avenue. Uh, it's a classic, streamlined, modern, stainless steel and glass brick structure built in 1948 by the Paramount Dining, Company, Dining Car Company in New Jersey. And it served traditional American food in provincial Woodsbury, Pennsylvania for 44 years until 1992 when three young entrepreneurs trucked the diner to South Beach and reopened it here with great success. Uh, I actually lived in this building for about 10 years. It's uh, 1525 Euclid Avenue, the Herbshire. Uh, it's an uh, El Murray Dixon building, one of his nicest from 1940, but the door is, I believe, new and was uh, put in there by the late uh, Wolfgang Misch, who uh, was a German guy who bought up a lot of buildings and fixed them up himself. Good guy. Uh, recently, I typed the keyword door into my computerized photo archive, and my computer came back with some 6,700 door photos that I had made. 
Now, of course, some of these 6,700 uh, were duplicates, similars, or alternate views of the same doors. But even so, our region's abundance of many hundreds, if not thousands, of fantastic doors is amazing. Even more astonishing is that each door seems to be one of a kind. While, I, while many show a strong family resemblance in style and content, in my archives I found no two buildings with the exact same door design. Each is unique and some are wildly unusual. For instance, look at this screen door at 1521 Michigan Avenue. Okay, it, uh, it has the requisite uh, standard issue flamingo here, stepping high, uh, the cattails, uh, some profusion of tropical vegetation, but these aren't sunbeams. These are part of a, a spider's web, and there's this big kind of scary spider coming down. Now, people often ask me, who designed these doors? Uh, and I don't know for sure, but I believe in most cases they were probably designed by each building's architect because these sculptural doors on the front facades are such a prominent you know, element of the entire building. So they wouldn't just leave it to anyone. Now, this apartment house with the spider web door was designed in 1939 by L. Murray Dixon, who, as many of you probably know, uh, was one of the greatest and certainly the most prolific of Miami Beach architects during the uh, Tropical Deco period. Uh, Dixon is known to have uh, personally designed the furniture and other interior accoutrements of uh, the hotels he created, so I think it's, it's very likely that he, or at least his office, designed this front door too. Um, from 1935 through 1942, several architects' associations, local architects' associations, published a series of annual yearbooks. And I discovered bound copies of them, uh, as shown here, in the Florida room of the main public library in downtown Miami. And you can see, I don't know if you can read this, it's type, this is 1935, 36, and so on, up to 1942, then there's a hiatus for the war, and it starts again, I think, in... Uh, 47. 47. 47, thank you. <laughs> well. Uh, for historians, these books are treasure chests uh, brimming with informative advertisements, rare photos, and splendid period illustrations. Now look at this. This is uh, the Florida Architecture and Allied Arts yearbook from February of 1935, and this is Floridiana to the max. Sunbeams, uh, fluffy clouds, palm trees, uh, undulating ocean waves, more undulating ocean waves, a lighthouse, more palm trees, a classical column, a capital, uh, two uh, flying uh, tropical birds. I mean, this is this is a pure thing here. Uh, this fabulous, uh, or not to forget what looks like a three-masted Spanish galleon, uh, in which, as the story goes, conquistador Juan Ponce de Leon seeking the mythical fountain of use, quote unquote, discover Florida in the year 1513. Now this fabulous drawing of the fabled Florida was by a man named Phineas E. Paist, P-A-I-S-T, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. But among other things, he had been the assistant architect on Miami's iconic Mediterranean revival style Vizcaya Mansion. And later was a supervising architect for George Merrick's Coral Gables development. So he was definitely a high priest of the old Mediterranean revival tradition. Uh, the next year, however, the cover of the 36, 1936 yearbook was in a much more streamlined more, or modern or art deco style. I mean, that's an enormous difference. <laughs> all these architectural details, all these architectural annuals showcased photos and floor plans of uh, member architects' projects accompanied by lists of various uh, subcontractors, among them for screen doors, for example, was Miami Ornamental Ironworks on Northwest 19th Street, or Meisner Products Incorporated in West Palm Beach. Uh, various ornamental metal companies also bought back ads in the back of the yearbook, sort of like uh, your high school yearbook. Uh, and uh, this is one you can see here from Coral Way Ornamental Iron Shop. Iron screen doors are specialty. Gates, grills, lamps, stair railings, balconies, wel welding. And uh, here's, a, one, here's an ad for the, Mar for the Orlando based R.G. Kaufman companies. And you can see here they declare something very interesting. They say original designs created here in our art department, executed by highly skilled craftsmen. So this seems to suggest that uh, 
At least some of these doors were designed in-house by the metalwork companies themselves and not necessarily by the architects. In any case, uh, the production of these uh, superb, stylish, handwritten, hand-wrought metal doors and railings required great blacksmiths who, uh, working uh, at their forges, uh, sweltering forges, had heated, hammered, and shaped iron, copper, and aluminum billets on anvils, beating the hot metal into delicate designs. There was nothing automated in this work. This was old school, this was craftsmanship, this was artists, and this is really an ancient art. And uh, there's still some, uh, some uh, metalworking shops around. That you can find them if you look on the internet. Anyway, uh, here are four more of my favorite screen, door, screen doors, and the first two are similar, though not identical. Uh, notice, uh, this is near the, the Miami Beach High School, by the way. Uh, and notice that the fiddlehead firm thing is here, uh, they, they curve to the right. Now nearby is this building, very similar, but they're curving to the left. And I don't know if you can see this, but right here there's a tuft of feathers coming out of the back of this bird's head, which the other one lacks. And it seems to me that the necks are a little bit different, but boy, they really are similar, and, and it makes you think they must have come from the same forge, from the same shop. Okay, this building here, that, that's the way it looked uh, maybe 15 years ago. Now here's how it looks today. Uh, you can see they've made it gray here and they put in this sort of refrigerator door with uh, the freezer. Uh, they like the cat. So I guess by your reaction, you don't like the door. I, I always said, I was going to ask for you know, your opinion. Here's, it was kind of rusting out, but it would have been nice to see this re re retained, you know, fixed up. Uh, here, this is in mid-beach. This is completely different style. You would never dream that that was from the same Forge, you know, that's clearly a different artist at work. Uh, it's a much heavier design. Uh, this one is just an amazing design that's just created by sl little slats of wood. And it's still there, but once again, this is, by the way, it's near the police station, the main police station in Miami Beach. But they've put a very heavy security gate around the whole building, and it's just hard to get the, the same shot anymore, but it's still there. This door um, isn't really that great a door, uh, but, uh, but I, I, I like the paint job here on the steps because it, it highlights that these tiles here are like uh, textured tiles. And this is the way the building looks now. Somebody just painted this flat blue on it. Yeah, so now it, it, this is probably more historically accurate in that in the old days, uh, these uh, Buildings were mostly painted white or cream with just one contrasting dark color. But still, I mean, that was great. And, and I, I really, I had a hard time finding it again because it just didn't look the same without that, that uh, highlighting of the, 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 the tiles. Uh, many of the finest uh, doors that I've documented are sculptural entranceways, not just screen doors but entire door treatments, some with no screen door at all, uh, but often uh, South Beach in particular and Miami Beach in general are the heart of the American tropical deco phenomenon. Many great period doors can also be found on mainland Miami, especially in the Morningside uh, neighborhood, and I've seen some outstanding doors in Broward. Uh, here, for example, is a building in uh, Hollywood, Florida. Back to Miami Beach, back to Miami Beach. This is one of my favorite uh, door treatments of all time. It's a private home on Pine Tree Drive designed in 1938 by architect uh, Henry Hohauser. And here's a little more close up. Now, no flamingos here, seem to be doves, but I think they qualify. But look at this, fiddlehead ferns again, they're everywhere. Uh, this is uh, from the 1938 yearbook that I was telling you about, and it's the same door. You can see that these faux lamps, the faux uh, lanterns here, are not in the original. It seems to have a more modern light than here, but everything else is it's the same building, all right. And uh, you can see that the uh, paint job was much more conservative. Uh, it's not color, but you can see that it's maybe two-tone and just not too much difference. It's not as spectacular. It's just, here's the whole ad and for the Acme Plaster Company, ornament in all its forms and intricacies. Renaissance and modern details are specialty. Um, 
Mr. Michael, our manager, Mr. Michael Fiorello, Fiorello, boasts of being the descendant of an unbroken line of plastic artisans for generations past. Now, uh, I don't know about this other building here. It's fantastic. I don't know where it is or where it was, if it's still around. But this certainly is the Pine Tree Building. And Ferrella did quite a job. Now, maybe this is a good time. Maybe this is a good time to mention architectural styles. Florida has a long and grand tradition of dramatic and fantastic architecture. Before Miami Modern and before Art Deco, Mediterranean Revival was Florida's signature style. Despite its name, Mediterranean Revival was actually more native to Miami than to the Mediterranean. Uh, as, I wrote in my, as I wrote in my South Beach book, Mediterranean Revival was, quote, a glorious American mishmash of Spanish, Italian, French, and Moorish motifs, a fairy tale architecture of romantic balconies, red tile roofs, arched colonnades, decorative bar, bar reliefs, tiled fountains, ornamental metal gates, soaring bell towers, and glowing white, gold, or rose colored walls of stucco festooned with ornamentation, heraldic medallions, friezes, statues, and finials. Against Florida's sunny blue skies and white cotton puff clouds, these huge castles were wonderfully picturesque. Unquote. So here we have uh, the famous Biltmore Hotel, a Mediterranean re revival landmark constructed in Coral Gables in 1926, but far more essential to uh, Miami architecture's uh, DNA is industrialist James Deering's Vizcaya Mansion, built between 1914 and 1922, but designed to re re resemble a 300-year-old Italian villa. They actually had a villa that they copied. Uh, albeit this one has some French touches and, a, and an abundance of Florida keystone, which differs from anything found in the Mediterranean. But still, you can see, you know, finials, uh, uh, these arched doorways, uh, balconies, romantic balconies, all kinds of decorative stuff. Now, the Mediterranean revival style was enormously popular uh, and was soon applied to everything, not just to grand hotels, country clubs, and mansions. The 1920s were filled with Mediterranean revival office buildings, churches, schools, fire stations, smaller apartment houses, plus some charming shopping districts uh, dotted with restaurants and sidewalk cafes. And I'm sure most of you recognize this as Espinola Way in South Beach. A more streamlined and modern Art Deco style came into fashion in the late 1920s in, Maya in Manhattan and in the mid-1930s in Miami Beach, where it blended with Mediterranean revival to create our local tropical deco style so vividly seen in our Floridiana rich doors. Uh, by the way, I think the term tropical deco was called, coined by Laura Sawinski, who wrote an excellent 1981 book by that name. It's a great book. Uh, later, I wrote quite a bit about the origins and evolution of tropical deco in my South Beach book, uh, published in 1995. And by the way, I have a couple copies of it here although it's out of print, uh, I have a few copies for sale. Um, but anyway, what, the, what I want to emphasize here is that the Mediterranean, the Deco, and the mid-century modern uh, did not reside in totally separate stylistic kingdoms, but they have merged and intermarried for decades. Uh, and consider this much beloved uh, uh, Mediterranean uh, revival buildings in the so-called Spanish village constructed by developer Newton Baker Taylor, NVT, Roney, in 1925 on Espanola Way. Uh, two full blocks of Espanola Way are lined by NVT Roney's lighthearted buildings, all designed by one architect named Robert A. Taylor, and all displaying a, a rich portion of Mediterranean characteristics, you know, romantic balconies, uh, arched doorways, heraldic medallions, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, I couldn't resist putting this in, this is a, a cover of a book called uh, Miami Millions, published in 1936 about Florida's boom and bust history in the 1920s. And in it, the uh, author, K Kenneth Ballinger, says of Roney, quote, it was his idea that people wanted a touch of old Spain, and he gave it to them. I don't know, this has got bathing beauties, a Venetian gondola, Miami skyline, undulating waves, coconut palms, uh, newsboy crying, extra, four million, seven million, eight million, extra, extra, and here's some poor investor 
reaching deep, deep down in his pocket to buy some property on margin. Uh, anyway, it's a terrific illustration. Uh, here, here again, this is Espinola Way. And uh, all the old Mediterranean revival elements are reappearing, but they're handled with a new, lighter touch. Uh, compared to Villa of the Sky, they're much simpler, less Baroque, and more streamlined. Gosh, it's getting cold in here. Um, it's over air conditioned like so much of Miami. Uh, anyway, uh, it's more streamlined and, and modern than uh, Via Vizcaya. Uh, first, you see this in Espinola Way in the 20s, and then in the 30s and early 40s, hundreds of luxurious private homes and modest apartment houses were built in Miami Beach and vicinity in a similarly loose style that was an unpredictable mix of various amount of Mediterranean motifs and modernist streamlining. Uh, consider, for example, this building. Uh, lots of people call it Mediterranean Revival, but it's crazy modern. And uh, uh, it's by Henry Hohauser in 1936, in reddish uh, brown uh, uh, tile roof, check. Uh, uh, romantic balcony, check, although it's too small for an adult to actually stand on. Uh, ornamental ironwork, check. Uh, heraldic medallions on the wall, check. So it checks all these boxes, uh, all the Mediterranean Revival boxes. But it doesn't look really Mediterranean Revival. I mean, if you put this next to this guy, it would look really out of place. Uh, I, I think this is more, looks more modern, partly because of this, uh, this uh, picture window in the middle. But more than that, it seems to me uh, it's a, there's a playful, cartoonish exaggeration to it all. And buildings like this are a Toontown version of Mediterranean Revival, the Disney version, if you will. And I don't know if you can see this, uh, but this is a, a, a still from a 1944 Walt Disney full-length feature film called Three Cavaleros. And it's set, most of it's set in Brazil, and here it's a very abashed-looking Donald, uh, Donald Duck. And uh, this, uh, this, uh, yes. And this, uh, this lovely uh, uh, Brazilian, uh, young, young Brazilian singer and dancer is named Aurora Miranda, and she is the younger sister of Carmen Miranda. And uh, as you can see, the Mediterranean, the red tile roofs, uh, the, the, the tile work, uh, the uh, door arch doorways, it's all, it's all replicated here in this very loose cartoonish style. And this is uh, another Disney film, a short uh, Mickey Mouse thing that's uh, supposedly set in Mexico. And again, you see this very simplistic uh, kind of cartoonish loose uh, uh, rendering of the Mediterranean Revival, and it just reminds me of this building on Espinola Way. I, I mean, I think it's sort of in the same spirit. Uh, this is again from Three Caballeros. This is supposed to be Brazil. And look at the color scheme. I mean, it's amazing. It looks like something in South Beach today. This is a real building in South Beach. And it, again, it, it seems to me, yes, it's Mediterranean Revival, but modern, but loose and kind of streamlined. Here's another one from 1929. Uh, I just think of this as Toontown. Uh, now, uh, this is a, a real life door uh, with uh, sc a scalloped seashell like opening, a uh, seashell like awning over the door, and it could be the palace of some ocean god in a cartoon. And the next one is uh, equally imposing. And uh, now the next one here is a fiddlehead fantasy, Fantasia, in uh, Morningside, but it's terrific. And of course, it's got the, uh, the awning and the red tiles and all this uh, Mediterranean revival stuff, even a few columns here. Oops, uh, sorry about that. Okay. Now this one, I just can't qu uh, qu quantify at all. I mean, it, it's got to be a cartoon-like building. I mean, there are little head ferns here, there's a faux lantern, there's a red tile roof, but where these designs come from, I don't know. But it's a pretty cartoony, pretty Toontown, and it's a real building in Morningside. Uh, here's a very elegant building in the northern part of Miami Beach. Another, uh, this is a, I think there's another one I missed. Okay, well, I guess not. Um, this one is kind of, you know, it's a kind of ordinary, not really great Mediterranean revival uh, building, you know, the stucco walls, the faux lantern, all that stuff. Uh, but the door, holy smokes, where did that door come from? It's really got a lot of power to it, and there are fiddlehead ferns in it, but uh, 
It's very abstract, very powerful, I think. Here's another Moroccan fantasy on Meridian Avenue. The only thing modern here are the uh, plastic wrapped newspapers. <laughs> this one is just too much. Uh, it's too ornate for my taste, but it's too fantastic to ignore. And this, this one, well, not strictly a doorway. Uh, I had to add it. It's an arched entranceway. Just too spectacular to leave out. I discovered it in a hidden courtyard around 6th Street here in South Beach sometime in the early 1990s, but I never could find it again. It was sort of like Brigadoon in the movie that disappeared in you know, the village. But actually, in, in fact, I think it was uh, torn down to make way for the Publix now over there. Now, focusing uh, on style again, uh, Another Art Deco variant was called Nautical Moderne, and it takes its design cues from the great ocean liners of the 1930s and 40s. And an icon of this style is literally right next door to us, right now, in the building right there behind this auditorium. It's the uh, city's beach patrol headquarters, and it resembles the bridge of a ship complete with porthole windows, pipe railings, and a mast. It was designed in 1934 by none other than Robert A. Taylor, the very same architect who just nine years before had designed Roni's Espinola Way. Again, there's a, an element of playful abstraction and Toontown-like theatricality to this landlocked ship. As befitting a seaside community, nautical modern details are widespread in Miami Beach, especially porthole windows on many doors, and here are some examples. This could be the uh, the door to a cabin on a ship. <laughs> I kind of like, you know, the doors that are a little bit run down, a little bit distressed. Of course, you know, we all hope that they'll be fixed up, but there is some additional sort of level of pathos that you get with these doors that uh, aren't uh, well taken care of. Well, this one is a beautiful, well taken care of door uh, on uh, Royal Palm Avenue, uh, Mid Beach. And right across the street, directly facing it, is this building. It's kind of echoing the design, and of course the uh, circles are also uh, shown here in the ironwork. More uh, nautical modern porthole windows. This is that building up in Hollywood with two porthole windows there. Late afternoon sun on that wooden door with the porthole window. Another one. Look at this one, this is incredible. I mean, there's tile work all down the stairs and it's brought out beautifully and then there's this sort of giant porthole window and this concentric circles and now let's go to, wow, uh, Little Havana. How's that for a door? <laughs> I think this one is from Normandy Isles. This is South Beach again. This is Buena Vista West, South Beach again. I mean, this looks like something out of a Flash Gordon movie. Uh, and going from circles to semi-circles, plus glass bricks and neon, here's uh, the door to a world-renowned place in uh, South Beach. Do any of you know it? Cubby must know it. Uh, Max. Max Club Deuce, exactly right, exactly right. Uh, where celebrities and supermodels rub shoulders with bad ladies and bums. It's also said to be uh, Miami Beach's oldest continuously operating bar room, dating back to 1926. The building was originally constructed in a sort of Spanish mission, Mediterranean revival style, and the Art Deco glass brick and neon door tre treatment was added sometime later, most likely in the early 1940s. Uh, by the way, I made this photo in the year 20, 2001 at about 2.30 in the morning, as you can see from the clock. <laughs> and uh, the car is a 1965 Buick Riviera. And I'll just add as a side note, this is one of my most copyright infringed images and I've got <laughs> lawyers going after the infringers. Oh, yeah. uh, inside Max Club Deuce, there's a door between the main bar room and the late uh, Matt Klein's uh, private office. And on this doorway is this glittering bar relief of a naked nymph holding a cocktail glass. And since she has no clothes, uh, I was, you know, you couldn't date, date her from that, but by looking at some old movies and the hairstyles, I would call her Miss 1940. 
Now, most of, the, most of the doors I've showed you have been in pretty good condition, but there are a lot of them that are not in good condition. And you can see here the wooden frame, the paint is peeling, the uh, trunk of the uh, palm tree is rusting out. Uh, here's a wider view of the uh, door. You know, you really hope someone would take care of it and not throw it away. Here's another one like that. Okay, uh, I'm also interested in uh, boarded up buildings. I like boarded up buildings as, as well, they're kind of distressed. Uh, this is the uh, Lord Charles apartment in Miami Beach's Museum District. It was built in 1953 in a Miami modern or MIMO style, and the architect was Albert Annis. Uh, nearby is uh, the entrance, the boarded up entrance to the Adams Hotel, designed by L. Murray Dixon, the prolific L. Murray Dixon, in 1938. And even in its distressed state, the doorway and the terrazzo floor with the triangles pointing towards the opening there, the door, it uh, seems to still have some kind of powerful geometric mojo, even in this condition. And just down the street is the Collins Park Hotel. Now this is an old picture. I photographed this around 1992 when I first came here. It's on film. Uh, and you can see it has sort of undulating ocean waves uh, in the wings of the uh, building itself, and then the chevrons, uh, little balconies, and this incredible doorway, I've never really seen anything like it, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just totally original. Uh, but uh, in the early 90s, in the mid 90s, it, it was lost, and they just put in one of those standard, you know, steel and glass doors. And then in 19, no, in, 20, in 27, the year 27, there was a fire that gutted this building and several other buildings next door, and for about 10 years, that whole building was boarded up, and, and it's still, I, I like it. I mean, it's still got, you know, a lot of beautiful energy coming out of it, even in this distressed state, boarded up. Uh, the good news is uh, that uh, all of these buildings, all three of these buildings, the Collins Park, the Adams Hotel, and the Lord Charles Apartment, plus some other nearby buildings, are to be rebuilt and redeveloped in a $55 million project by the Chetrit Group, overseen by architect Kobe Karp. Uh, work was delayed for years on this thing, but finally is underway. This picture shows how the Collins Park Hotel looked in February of this year, and you can see they clearly are gutting it and rebuilding it. And uh, a rendering on uh, Kobe Karp's website seems to show that Hohauser's original door treatment will be replicated. Uh, many of the uh, smaller uh, and more modest Tropical Deco buildings in Miami Beach feature relatively simple doors containing louver jalousy windows like these that uh, impart a hint of horizontal streamlining and a geometric feeling to the entire affair. Here are some more examples. These are sort of in the back alleys. This is the front door. Needs a little paint job. I like this one. And of course, the railing is pretty great too, and I like the fact that this door is just kind of askew compared to the other ones. Uh, I'm also, I also like a lot of these old utilitarian uh, surface doors I find on the alley sides of many buildings. And you can't beat uh, that color scheme. There's a little sign on the door right here, and if you look close up, it says, uh, fire alarm panel inside this closet. I don't know what is behind this door, but it looks pretty interesting. Here's another new door. I don't know what, what's behind that. But I do know what's behind this one. This is actually a, a telephone uh, box. Uh, because I know this because uh, the, the old 1525 Euclid building that I lived in for a while that I showed you before had something like this in, in, in the back also. And it was filled with all kinds of little telephone connecting wires for each apartment. Uh, I don't know if it's still in use now. I don't think so. But of course, you've got the uh, satellite dishes and new technology now. My, Miami Beach's uh, tradition of decorated doors and fantasy door treatments didn't stop with the end of the deco period sometime in the uh, late 40s. A new style, now known as Miami Modern, or MIMO, emerged and evolved in the 1950s and 60s, and many doorways in the new style are, are photogenic. Here, for instance, is a screen door in a Miami Beach home featuring a star stylized starburst motif, uh, typical of the uh, space age decor of the 50s and 60s. You know, there were 
you, if you ever look at uh, YouTube, at uh, the great uh, dramatic anthology series Playhouse 90 on CBS, and you know you see the entrance, the credits, they've got a revolving starburst design, and there, there are cars like the Pontiac Fire Chief, you know, or Star Chief. Um, anyway, so this star motif, we start seeing it around uh, town here. This is a, a Miami modern apartment building on Bay Harbor Islands. It has large diamond shaped uh, uh, motifs on the door. And then if you look closer up, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little starburst, a raised starburst there. There's a not as great door in Miami Beach, but somewhat similar. I don't really know what this entrance is for, but it's terrific. Uh, you've got stairway here, another stairway here, and these great, like, delicate little uh, railings and fences here. But uh, this is on Bay Harbor Islands as well. But the, the, my, my, my mo piece de resistance is this astonishing door that seems to take its inspiration from mid-60s op art. Here's a wider view of it. And uh, in our own uh, postmodern era, I see some local architects are honoring and continuing the old playful tradition with fantastic new doors and buildings. Foremost among them is this postmodern South Beach townhouse uh, designed by Todd Tragesh of the STA Architectural Group. Uh, this building is called El Cyclone because of the tornado-like cyclonic shape of the uh, central stairwell. Uh, decorating the exterior are uh, ceramic sea creatures by the Miami sculptor Carlos Alves. Now, I made this image in March 1998, shortly after the building was completed, and by chance, as I composed my shot, an Orthodox Jew strolled by this very unorthodox building. <laughs> but uh, going a little bit deeper, one can see that actually this building's design harkens back to the typical small Miami Beach apartment houses of the 30s and 40s with their tripart design, you know, the central stairway flanked by two residential wings. So maybe not so unorthodox. Not so unorthodox. Uh, and what's more, the, do the owners have not forgotten the importance of the door, though this time it features not tropical birds, not sunbeams, not fiddlehead ferns, not uh, <laughs> tropical vegetation, but a friendly, very happy-looking, cartoon-like octopus. And even without the flamingos, the pelicans, the sunbeams, and all the rest of the Floridiana motifs, I think El Cyclone gets it and radiates the true Miami Beach spirit. And with that, I thank you for taking this walk through the kingdom of tropical. All right, well, thank you again for coming out. I really